Welcome to Crossroad Connection. My name is David Scheringa, and we're here uh, in Web TV speaking out for those who are left unheard. I have a very special guest uh, in the studio with me today, Judge Robert Bell. He has been on the radio program, which we had for five years, by the same name, Crossroad Connection, and uh, a, a popular uh, feature of our program. And welcome back, uh, Judge Bell. Thank you. It's nice to be here again. Well, it's just always good to have you here. Folks uh, who do not know you, you, are, uh, a, a, you have a seat on a district court in the United States appointed by Ronald Reagan, confirmed by the Senate. And so uh, you've been doing that since, what, 1987 or 26 something? 26 years. 26 right. years. Right. Well, we're, we feel really honored to have you on the program. So what's happening in the world of criminal justice these days? What's, what's, what are the trends from the view of a judge? What are you seeing? Well, there, there are several things that are uh, troubling. Uh, the immediate trouble is to finance the court systems and finance the prison systems. Uh, the prison systems are at their maximum. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're triple bedded in many cases uh, in the rooms. Um, they are, because of the crowdedness, they are very restive, and that is there's a significant amount of unrest within the prisons due to the overcrowding. And the overcrowding is due in part because of the financial burden mm -hmm. of building prisons and maintaining them. So um, that's part of the get tough on crime. It's part sure. of the trying to deal with this large group of antisocial people who um, continue uh, to commit criminal activity and have to be incarcerated. The um, mandatory sentencing and that kind of stuff um, that adds does, to that? Uh, that does. The, one, the misperception that may arise from that is the fact that, that people, I run into people who say, isn't that inhumane? How can you do that? Uh, really, the, those mandatory sentences largely relate to people who've had two, three, four, five felony convictions and who have spent time in prison and who have come out and just continue with that as kind of a, a trend that has to be stopped. And so the way to stop it has been to obviously make a longer sentence, uh, which exacerbates the problem in the long run because right. the person comes out even less socialized. Um, but that's, that's, that's one of the trending issues that, that uh, we're very concerned about on the criminal side. But Judge, it, it, it strikes me as someone who's not an expert in the field, of course, um, that mandatory sentencing strips you oh. of being able to do your job, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You can't, how can you administer justice in a particular situation when your hands are kind of tied? That the idea of a minimum is if it's, let's take the three strikes and you're out. If you have mm -hmm. three previous criminal offenses, felony offenses, and a fourth is committed, then let's say, depending on the particular situation, it's either a 10 or a 20 year minimum sentence. That's probably the sentence range that a person the fourth time through for a violent felony would receive. But the problem begins when you look at the exceptions. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the nature of the underlying convictions and the fact that the individual before one was really not the instigator, was really the ride-along, if you will. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have people who are desperately ill, and, and to send them to prison for 20 years when they're desperately ill and you know they're going to die within a few years is really difficult, too. So there are all kinds of variables that, that rob a judge of the discretion, which is absolutely key. And, and, and we operate on the assumption that there are soft judges and, and judges that don't know how to do their job, and they're judges that are tough. And, and really, that's kind of a, oh, it's kind of an old wives' tale. It's really not true. Right. There are some judges who might be more lenient. There might be a little more tough. But, but the gradient between the two is very, very, very narrow, very narrow. The, the, the mandatory sentencing sort of thing um, bothers me as a Christian, where the yes. Bible speaks about justice, and especially for the poor. And so when a judge has his hands tied, that si strikes me as something bad for society because it's, it's, it's really contrary to God's law, isn't it? Is that too strong? 
A little, you're a little strong, but I, but I would say that yes, yes, I, I would say that would be another argument that would make, and that is, uh, do you trust the judges? And I tell this to people: Do you trust the judges to arrive at a just and fair result? If you don't, then make it mandatory. Mm -hmm. And if you make it mandatory, why are you putting me in that position? Just put somebody else, put, have somebody else set up there, pay them half what you pay me, and let them do it. Well, uh, isn't part of the problem, uh, it strikes me, that uh, the reason that mandatory sentencing and so forth, we're able to get that by people, you know, I mean, to do that and so forth, is because the average person thinks of justice as payback. I think of justice needing to have a judge, an impartial judge, to weigh the circumstances, understand the situation, make a determination, determine what's best to go forward. That's, that's much, much more than payback. If it's just payback, then who needs the judge? Just put cameras up and set, set, set the, uh, set the uh, punishment, right? It's revenge basically you're talking about. That's right. And, and revenge is not justice, revenge correct? Revenge is not justice. It's not justice. No, but it, it's but not. But th doesn't the average person think in those? When they say, I want justice, they want revenge. Right, right. They, wa they want to be made whole and in a little more than that, I say. Mm -hmm. And if they've been robbed or something like that. Um, but, but you also have to, have to, talk, to look at the psychic of the person who has committed the crime. And there are many hardened individuals out there mm. whose cons who have no concept of justice. The only thing they understand is, what, a, what is my price I have to pay for what I've done? In other words, how many years do I get? I'll take the licks if I'll I need to. I'll take the licks, yeah. but I'm going to risk it. Yeah. Many times I have major drug dealers come in, and, and, and I will see them, and they, they are in front of me again. And or they're in front of me for the first time, but they've been in front of other judges, and I will say, why did you do this? You knew it was unlawful. Well, I didn't think I'd get caught, number one. I said, well, well, what does that have to do with it? Well, because it was worth the risk. It was worth the risk because I felt the risk was low. They've analyzed it, and they figured out it was a low risk, and they gambled, and they lost, which is, which is not... And so what am I going to do for justice on that one? Yeah. That's a difficult one right. to do justice on. Yeah. Well, another reason why you know, we need to have judges to be able to make those decisions because everything's so unique. I got to thinking about this recently because my, my daughter-in-law uh, got a ticket in Illinois um, for turning right on a, on a red without stopping long enough, and it was from a camera. So the camera said that she uh, was there for one and a half seconds rather than the mandatory three seconds, and so she got a hundred or fine. And uh, about three years ago, I was in Southern California, and I approached a, a light, and it turned yellow. But I was quite close, and I I know that you can be legally if your if your front wheels are in the intersection, you're legally in the in the intersection. But that was a real quick yellow. And it was a surprisingly quick yellow. And so sure enough, I got a $400 ticket in, in the mail um, with, a, with a camera showing my wheels uh, you know, in, in the wrong place. And it struck me, that's mandatory sentencing. The, the, well, the, it's, because it's, I, I, go ahead. Well, it, yeah, but, but, it, but before mandatory sentencing, it, it's a determination of guilt without giving you an opportunity to, to make your ameliorating uh, defense to it. Well, Which you may well have had in that particular case, particularly if it was a, if it was a speed zone of 40 or 50, and to have slammed on your brakes would have jeopardized the person behind you and everybody else. So, so yes, yes. My son happened to get one of those tickets in Chicago and had quite a discussion with me about it. And his was his was running too, running red lights. Yeah. Out. Well, yeah. it's uh, <laughs> what's interesting about it. You see, it seems to me that in the traffic system, the policeman is the is the judge, pro the prosecutor, judge, and jury in that situation, and he has, he has leniency to do what he wants. He doesn't have to give you a ticket. Right. But um, if, if he stops me for going through a red light, I can make my case to him, and I have some semblance of justice. But you, you, could, have, you could have gone back to Illinois or, or California. Right. You could we have know asked that to go happens. from a magistrate. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I, I, I went to traffic court once. <laughs> that is a total waste of time. 
you can't win there, you know. <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> well, anyway, well, these, these issues of justice, I think, are extremely important. Um, and, now, and the perception of justice is as important as mm. justice itself. Mm. Perception on, on the part of the, of the average person? Uh, perception, yes, and particularly the perception on behalf of the accused and the defendant. And, and that's why we have courthouses that are usually made of uh, stone or brick, and we usually have courtrooms that have flags in them and that you're supposed to be quiet, have no cell phones with you when you go in, and that's why people rise when the judge walks in and the judge wears a robe. That is all designed to give a perception of fairness and justice. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're, we take particular care uh, when we build, design, remodel courthouses to make sure that everything is done to make it look um, refined, thoughtful, um, deliberate. You want to give it an, an aura in a, in a, in a good you sense. You want to give an aura because yep. that aura is essential because people act on their perceptions right. and, and all these, their intuitions of what's going on. And, and that's why, you know, a, a, a person in the courtroom, the judge always refers to the lawyer as Mr. Smith, not Ray. It's Mr. Smith. His name is Ray Smith, fine, but he's not Ray in the courtroom. He's Mr. Smith. And that's why an accused is Mr. Jones, not whatever his first name is. Everything's because it's formal. designed to be formal. It's designed to demonstrate uh, that care and deliberation and thoughtfulness and justice is what it's all about. Thank you so much for being with us again. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. And thank you for being with us. My name is David Schuringer. You've been uh, watching Crossroad Connection with a special guest, Judge uh, Robert Bell. We hope to see you again right here next week.